Hi, it's Gabe from uh, Product Management Team. I'm here with Shemek from Engineering, and uh, we're here to talk about the deployment of Cord Enterprise Network Managers on Kubernetes, uh, specifically a reference at deployment on uh, Azure Kubernetes services, which will be included in our latest release of uh, CNM 1.2 later in, uh, in March. Now, for those that are unfamiliar with uh, the Network Manager, a, a brief introduction on what it, it is and what it does, um, it's essentially the software required to operate an, uh, an enterprise-grade network on Corda. If you go through the documentation, you can see there are a lot of components that are required for this, uh, for this service. Each of those performs specific functions uh, um, that are required in a network. Now, obviously, with, with so many components, we wanted to provide an easy way for people to deploy a network manager instance, either in their own infrastructure, if they're doing it as part of their development cycle, Let's say you're a code app developer and you want a dynamic network to do to run some tests on that is representative to the network you will find in production. Or you might be a prospect network operator. You intend to run a network in production. You want to assess what it takes to be a network operator, how the software works, or you want just a simple reference deployment for your own uh, for your own uh, Kubernetes deployment. Now that's what we're trying to accomplish with this deployment. I'll switch over to the guide, this will be available in the official documentation uh, website of, um, of Corda Network Manager. Uh, and you'll see that uh, some of the prerequisites that we're assuming in this guide, Chemek, is uh, people have some basic knowledge on, uh, on Kubernetes, although we sort of point uh, to, to the different guides required to get you up and running on AKS. Uh, you'll probably have already uh, Kubernetes installed. You'll uh, need to have Helm 2 installed as well. Make sure you're, you're using that version because that's the one we we tested it against, and obviously you will need to be connected uh, to your own cluster to be able to run uh, to the run the following steps. Um, the first instruction that is somewhat specific to the script is uh, setting uh, the storage class and namespace, which is listed here. The following uh, parts of the script will assume a CENM as the namespace. Uh, and finally, the final step is uh, obtaining uh, the scripts that we'll be going through. You'll be able to find them in the documentation guide uh, once that goes live uh, as part of the release. Now, talking through the options that we have in this uh, documentation, Shemek, uh, we have obviously the bootstrapping by allocating new external IPs. Uh, you mentioned you have uh, one that allows you to reuse uh, allocated external IPs and then a manual one. Do you want to talk us through why you, you created uh, these three options? What is the difference among them? Yeah, uh, thanks, Gabe. Yeah, of course, uh, the manual one was the obvious one. As um, when developing a hand chart, we needed to have the option to run it uh, one by one. But then when we were deploying again and again and again, uh, realized, I realized that we need a more automatic way. So then we developed the bootstrapping script, which um, just covers all those hand charts in a one more script. That is how it was going. And now the difference is obviously uh, the first script allows you to generate brand new IP addresses. The second one is if you're running this uh, on a regular basis uh, as part of your testing cycle, for instance, you might want to reuse some IP addresses. This dramatically reduces the time required to exactly. get everything up and running. Exactly. And then you mentioned the final bit is uh, if you want to do it manually, if you just want to understand how it works, um, that's probably a good, a good reference. Uh, the documentation will also contain uh, a page for each of the uh, Helm charts. So you can, uh, you can go and have a look at that to see which parameters uh, we're using in this specific uh, reference deployment. But why don't we just uh, get into it? So let's run it through and then maybe you can talk us through what happened. So in this case, I'm already on the um, Helm folder. I will just run the script. So now you can see namespace, tiller namespace are both cinnamon. Yeah, uh, it's just sunny to check, make sure that you are deploying to the right Perfect. Good. And then this is the where the fun comes. You press the enter, and that's all. <laughs> you have to just wait. Right. So the what the script is saying we're asking for an IP address for the identity manager. Yes, that's right. Uh, we need that IP address because uh, one of the first steps is to run PKI tool, and PKI tool needs to know identity manager IP address, public IP address to prepare configurations, so we need to know. So this is the first step, allocate IP address for IDT manager, know it, and then we can run the next step. Perfect. 
Then the second step is the notary. We're getting an IP address. Yes, uh, again, that one as well. again, because notary when registering need to advertise its IP address, public IP address. So Perfect. we need to know it beforehand. Um, okay, then we are creating the signer. Signer, uh, yes. And the, uh, the first initial step in a signer is to run a PKI tool. PKI tool creates all the private and public keys and, uh, and, that's all, and certificates. And that's all. And then signer starts. Yep. And then IDP manager. And we're creating the notary after we receive the IP. Yes. Getting the network map. Exactly. And then uh, that's it. Yeah. So, it so the script took quick. a minute and a half. Um, but I think we mentioned in the docs that doesn't mean that the job is completely over. We need to check that the nodes are up and running. So, as you can see, um, Kubernetes is still working to get these nodes up and running. Exactly. And uh, it is quite common in a Cinnamon deployment that you have to wait a bit because there is a dance between especially notary and network map. Uh, notary is registering with a, a admin manager and create a node info. Then uh, network map needs to consume that node info, sign a network parameters files. Notary is waiting for it. So you have a dance between them. So you, you will see that, uh, for example, notary is restart is will be restarted a few times before getting to the running state. Sometimes it takes a few minutes. Another point to mention, and I guess we have it while we wait uh, for this to be ready, we can go to the docs quickly. Uh, the next steps, once you have this up and running, is obviously you might want to connect um, to the shell of the different services exactly. if you want to. Exactly, yes. um, so the script uh, prints out the shell instruction, but you can also have a look at the IP addresses. And then obviously the natural next steps, once you have the uh, network up and running, is uh, register a node or many. Uh, so one thing you should be aware of is obviously um, this is the parameters you need to include in your node configuration, um, which obviously are dependent on the IP address you get allocated by your cloud provider. And okay. then the second one is the network root trust or. So if you, if you switch to the terminal and show, yeah, at the end of the script, we even prepare a snippet uh, to copy paste into your node.com, code node.com, so you can easily register not without figuring out how to where's the IP address was the port just yep. copy paste and so now everything is running so if I try to SSH into the network map and there you go yep. perfect perfect thank you